Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Redwen. Uh, thank you, Sikilani. Uh, so just to continue on that, um, um, as already mentioned, uh, maybe in the presentation in, in today's Tunisia, we, we have dozens of people that are behind bars for their uh, statements or opinions for their associative or political activities or detained without evidence for political reasons. And this is exactly the, the cons so-called conspiracy case really is emblematic of that. Um, this is a major step uh, backwards in terms of human rights work, in human rights in Tunisia, and arbitrary arrest and detention are today at the core of Qais Ayed's system of repression uh, since July uh, 25. Qais uh, Ayed government has methodically attacked not only democratic institution but also individual and collective freedoms. Um, we have reached at the point where the last pillars of uh, democracy are really hanging on a thread, and this is the independent civil uh, society, but also the, the press and the media. Um, so I think uh, uh, Sikilani detailed more on the conspiracy case, how um, this is emblematic of the situation, how it deprived the, um, people from their uh, freedom and their rights arbitrarily on the basis of serious accusations that include terrorism, because it's really uh, uh, the anti-terrorist law of two uh, of 2015 that is used against um, those opponents and critics of the president and without any credible evidence that is presented until now by the judicial authorities. And yet they are imprisoned for over 14 months. Um, to, additionally to that, um, we are uh, really uh, several of the people that are detained in this uh, case uh, are also um, seeing other prosecutions against them for the uh, public statement for a lot of them and the multiplication of the prosecutions against critics, lawyers, opponents uh, of the authorities are also a strategy uh, to actually keep them in detention at all costs. Um, so beyond this case, I would like to um, to speak more specifically about the growing number of persecution against people who have simply exercised their freedom of expression, and in some cases because they exercised uh, their profession of journalist. Um, about freedom of expression, we clearly see that. If to, to mention some example, uh, a Nahda leader, uh, Rashid Hanoushi, was sentenced to 15 months in prison uh, on appeal for incitement uh, under the anti-terrorism law for a statement he, he made at a funeral in uh, February 2022. Um, this is an example, and in addition of that, he's also detained in another case for uh, a public statement. Um, an artist, Rashid Tambura, who painted actually um, a stencil uh, of the president to denounce abuses against migrants for, uh, from the continent and who shared photos of uh, this painting on the internet, on his Facebook page, was arrested in July last year and sentenced in December to two years in prison on the basis of the decree uh, 54 on cybercrime for spreading false uh, news in order uh, to harm a public official. Uh, just to uh, mention another example, Nasruddin Halimi, um, an individual was arrested in November 2022 and convicted for Facebook post criticizing the army uh, and others, uh, other uh, Facebook uh, publication supporting a member of the opposition. He actually spent 14 months in pre-trial detention before being sentenced in March of last year um, to seven, uh, in March, sorry, of this year to seven uh, years of imprisonment by the CAF military court, including on the on the under decree uh, 54 on cybercrime. So these are just 
uh, three examples uh, of the dozens of people that are behind bar today, but they show that the authorities are acting in retaliation against all kinds of criticism, uh, that they imprison people for peaceful statement and place them actually in preventive, uh, in pretrial detention, uh, when according to international law, but also the Tunisian criminal uh, code of criminal procedure, uh, preventive detention should be an exceptional measure, uh, which must be justified by imperative reasons. Uh, and it also shows that actually Tunisian authorities are still continue to use military courts uh, to try civilians. So just maybe to, to come back on the use of this decree uh, 54 uh, for those who are not familiar with it, the decree law 54 um, was promulgated by the president in September 2022, and it is um, a dangerous law in uh, several aspects. First, because it criminalizes uh, the dissemination of false news and provides for harsh sentences. Uh, five to uh, ten years in prison for offenses relating to expression uh, that are actually very vaguely defined. Uh, when it's um, when it's a public servant that is uh, targeted, it's actually ten uh, years. Uh, the punishment is ten years in prison instead of five. Um, it's it's. Uh, the Article 24 of this decree law actually leaves the door open to abuse and the targeting of dissent voices. Uh, this decree law ha uh, has become really a growing threat to freedom of expression, but also freedom of the press, because we are seeing the authorities using it increasingly. Mainly it's Article uh, 24 on the dissemination of false news. But uh, this is, at the same time, defamation should always be considered a civil offense, not a criminal one, and the public figure should not be protected for, like, further protected than other from criticism. Um, but at the same point, what I'm uh, speaking about this decree is also because he, some provision of this decree 54 um, are also in... Um, blatant violation of the right to privacy as it grants the authority broad powers to monitor individuals on telecommunication network, collect personal data, and intercept private uh, communication. And maybe a last point about it is that the code of military justice is applicable in the in the enforcement uh, of the decree and um, when trying civilians in military court is contrary to international standards uh, on the right to fair trial. And until now, uh, at least two civilians have been convicted by military courts under the decree 54. Uh, we can mention the case of Shayma Isa, um, who is also one of the opponents accused in the so-called conspiracy case, but also the case I mentioned earlier of uh, Nasreddin Halimi. Um, most of the cases we documented at Human Rights Watch um, around this decree were actually initiated following complaints by government official or institution, the Minister of Justice, Religious Affairs, the former uh, Ministry of Interior, but also the um, election body or um, the Directorate of Prisons or, of, uh, or the Police Union to, to give other examples. Um, uh, but maybe to also like try to um, speak about the prism of uh, the press freedom in this context, we have observed uh, an escalation in the attack on the media and against independent journalists, um, in addition to the judicial harassment of certain journalists and the fact that at least two journalists are behind bars uh, today in Tunisia, it's uh, Shada Hajan Barak, but also Mohamed Bogaleb. Uh, we are actually seeing this decree used against journalists and media figures. Um, it's used in different manner, first, 
to initiate complaints against them um, by government bodies uh, or representative. At, at least 28 people have been actually detained, prosecuted or investigated on the basis of this decree law, according to our documentation, and among them at least nine journalists or media figures are be being prosecuted or investigated. And yet, at the same time, there is actually decree laws um, uh, 115, 116 of two, uh, 2011 that govern offenses committed by the press. So just to mention that um, this is also, a, it's a threat to the right of privacy, but actually also to the protection of the of journalistic uh, sources when we see some of the provision of this decree. Um, and uh, at the same time, uh, it is used by the authorities as a tool of dissuasion. No one is safe, actually, from prosecution in this, this decree today, if someone expressed any opinion online. And this is why it leads to uh, self-censorship, particularly in the media field today. Um, it doesn't mean that the authorities are not uh, at the same time using other repressive uh, provisions of the penal code or the telecommunication code, but we're really seeing an emphasis on that. Uh, maybe just to mention a last point, it's really like to put, uh, it was mentioned already by C. Kileni, but to uh, come back to the context of the judiciary uh, under this prosecution, um, and the fact that the executive is actually uh, on a tight grip on the judiciary since the dissolution of the Supreme Court and the other attacks on the independence of the judiciary. Um, and today, the, the fact that the guarantees of access to fair trial and due process are not guaranteed for all those who are prosecuted in this context, in uh, the so-called conspiracy case, but also from the, for the people who are actually actually uh, prosecuted for exercising their um, rightfully their uh, rights to uh, expression or uh, just doing their work as uh, journalists. Thank you.